on a Friday night or Saturday. Let's see how that works out. But the frontal system is stalled. Scattered showers and thunderstorms will eventually clear out. Everything moving backwards and will clear it out hopefully by tomorrow afternoon. The five-day forecast? Active. Thanks there, uh, Dan. Through tomorrow as it moves over the open waters there uh, just north of the Bahamas, maybe another 10 or 15 mile per hour wind. And the chances that it hits the U.S. mainland, in your opinion? It's getting greater chances right now. We're looking at a possibility anywhere from South Florida up through the uh, Cape Hatteras area in about two to three days. In Puerto Rico, tens of thousands of people are homeless tonight, and officials there are looking, looking to Washington for some kind of help. Correspondent Doug Tunnell reports on the destruction in the U.S. Commonwealth. Puerto Rico began taking stock of Hurricane Hugo today, and it was not a pretty sight. After a flying tour of some of the hardest hit areas, Puerto Rico's governor said Hugo did $40 million worth of damage, but others say the figure is much higher. A small island off Puerto Rico's east coast named Culebra took a direct hit. And today, the government estimated that 60% of all homes were destroyed there. Nearly 40,000 in all are believed to have lost their homes. It was a day for islanders to return to what was left of their neighborhoods, go back to their boats for a first look at what Hugo left in its wake. Despite a rush to restore electricity, so many power lines are down that workers say it will take weeks to restore full service. Most houses are without running water. Some have water all around them. Authorities appealed for sightseers to stay off the streets, but they were choked with traffic anyway. Along the hard-hit northeast coast, some towns and villages are still cut off by fallen debris. For the first time since Hurricane Hugo passed, the bulldozers reached the little fishing village of Las Carabas today. And when they did, they discovered there were parts of town that weren't just damaged, they were gone. The only thing left standing at Lucy Valdez's house were her kitchen cupboards. It used to be on a hill above the fishing port. She never believed a storm could be like this, she said. The washer, the dryer, everything is gone. Leo Calinaro's 40-foot trailer had been his pride and joy. I don't feel, you know, I feel very bad. You know, I feel sorry. I, I love this place. There may be disagreements about where Hurricane Hugo will go next, but here in Puerto Rico, there are no doubts about where it has been. Dan? Doug, what kind of help do our fellow Americans in Puerto Rico need? They need emergency aid right now, Dan. About 80% of the island, it was estimated this morning, is still without any kind of electricity. Some of that has been restored, but not much. The same goes for water, and the longer that situation uh, continues, then the greater the, the risk of some kind of health problems arising. And how much of any aid has arrived so far? So far, we haven't seen much at all. We know that the government's been in contact uh, with the authorities in the United States to try to get it in. Uh, but we have not seen it, and ne neither have we seen much activity uh, by the National Guard here that's supposed to be helping out with the relief effort. Doug Tunnell in Puerto Rico, thanks. Forecasters are cautiously figuring tonight, trying to predict the course of Hugo as the hurricane casts an evil eye toward the U.S. mainland. There are a number of possibilities. At the storm's current speed, that is its progress speed, a low-pressure system over the southeast United States and a high out over the Atlantic could aim Hugo at the southern Atlantic coast by Friday. But if the hurricane slows up, the low moving toward the northeast could steer Hugo even more northward Saturday. Now to make an educated guess at Hugo's future, forecasters are looking to the past and the course taken by other East Coast hurricanes. In 1960, you may remember, Hurricane Donna hit land in Florida, then barreled all the way up the east coast of the United States to Maine. That storm killed 148 people. Ten years ago, Hurricane David also came ashore in Florida and again in Georgia and South Carolina. It eventually died out up over Pennsylvania. Total death toll from Hurricane David in the Caribbean and the USA, 1,200. Now, unfortunately, there is another important storm tonight to tell you about, Tropical Storm Iris. It is down in the Caribbean, east of the Leeward Islands, that would include Antigua and Guadeloupe, about 700 miles behind Hugo and following a similar path. Iris has winds up to 70 miles an hour. It could become a full-blown hurricane with top winds of 74 miles an hour tomorrow. Still to come on tonight's CBS Evening News, meteorologist Neil Frank with his prediction for the path of Hurricane Hugo, and David Dow on a scientific theory that hurricanes in my lifetime and yours and that of our children may get bigger and meaner than 70 people on the U.S. East Coast. A quick review now, looking at the map, Right now, Hurricane Hugo is 185 miles northeast of Grand Turk Island and moving toward the northwest at 12 miles an hour. 
It's skidding past these islands and possibly the Bahamas. They'll get hit hard, but skidding to the north of them. The storm is expected to continue moving in that general direction at that speed for the next 24 hours, passing north of the Turks and Caicos Islands and then brushing past the Bahamas. It's also expected that a hurricane watch officially will be issued sometime tomorrow, serving notice that Hugo could, could hit land somewhere between Miami and Cape Hatteras, North Carolina by Friday. You know, some experts are predicting that in years to come, we and our children may be hit by even more deadly hurricanes. The theory is that the polluting ways of humans are to blame. David Dow explains. As bad as Hugo is, the hurricanes of the future could be worse. That, at least, is the controversial conclusion of some scientists who've studied the greenhouse effect, the global warming that may occur as man pours more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. It is possible that if we experience a greenhouse effect warming over the next 50 years, that the tropical ocean temperatures will rise by a few degrees. And if this happens, it is quite possible that we would see more intense hurricanes. Last year's Hurricane Gilbert, tracking winds up to 200 miles an hour, is thought to represent the upper limit of hurricane intensity. But heat the tropical waters by, say, 4 degrees, and the increased energy, says Dr. Emanuel, could drive the winds of a super hurricane to 240 miles an hour. But it really boils down to uh, a, an increased potential for the destructive forces of the winds and the waves when the hurricane hits land. It all seems logical to some who've worried about the greenhouse effect. We should consider this as a reasonable possibility that needs more attention, more work, and possibly uh, changes in our policy. But others, including federal weather experts, are skeptical, saying ocean warming could be offset by other climatic influences. There are other factors that would come into play that aren't included in that model. And that's why the model is probably uh, inadequate. There's reason to hope that the ocean warming scenario is wrong or will never take place. In theory, anyway, a two-degree heating of the waters that spawned Hurricane Hugo could have increased its destructive power by up to 30 percent. David Dow, CBS News, Los Angeles. Joining us now from Houston is Dr. Neil Frank, former director of the National Hurricane Center, now chief meteorologist for CBS affiliate KHOU in Houston and a CBS News consultant. Dr. Frank, your best guess, this hurricane dissipates and goes away or hits the U.S. mainland? Well, I don't think it's going to dissipate, Dan, not in the late September, as you know, with your background in hurricanes. And I think you've well described the dilemma tonight. Some place from northeast Florida on up to the outer banks of Carolina is probably going to see the impact of this storm. Now, there's a river of air that's blowing over top of the storm right now that would suggest that the storm would go to straight to the north. The dilemma tonight is that that river is probably going to change its course and as it does so, it looks like the river is going to blow from the southeast towards the northwest. And if it does, this storm is going to approach the southeast U.S. before the weekend. And what are the odds that it can just go away, blow out to sea? Maybe 35, 40 percent? Oh, no, I'd put it a lot less than that. I would say 5 or 10 percent. I think it's a lot higher probability that some place in the southeast U.S. is going to feel the brunt of this storm. Dr. Neil Frank, thanks. We'll be back in touch. For the CBS Evening News, Dan Rather, stay tuned for this station for more hurricane information along the east coast of the United States. For us here in the Northeast, and specifically, of course, the New York City area, we're on the lower end of the percentage scale to getting struck by the storm. I'll show you why in just a minute. Right now, it's about 150 miles northeast of the Turks and Caicos Islands in uh, the southeast Bahamas. You can see it's still in that steady northwest path. The winds are about 105 miles per hour. It does look like, though, it's become a, bit or, a little better organized, and the possibility of strengthening is still there over the next... Uh, day or so. Now here's why I think it's going to take this uh, possible track. High pressure is building in across the eastern parts of New England and Canada. That's going to act as a block to sort of push the hurricane more westward. So anywhere from maybe Florida on up into the Carolinas looks like prime target right now. I'll be back with more on that and more on our own forecast in just a little bit. A slow process to get that sunshine back in here. And also still on our maps tonight, of course, with two weather events out in the Atlantic. One, the Hurricane Hugo, up to 105 mile an hour winds. The other, Tropical Storm Iris, almost a hurricane with 70 mile an hour winds, both moving off to the northwest at about 12 to 14 miles per hour. So we're still going to be watching what the effect will be on the Bahamas, more importantly, what the, the effect will be on the southeast coast of the United States. And I'll put the satellite picture into motion. You can watch both storms moving in that general northwest direction. And for us, too, watch the clouds that are still locked in across our part of the country. But Everything's moving pretty much from south to north. Eventually, it'll start shifting a bit westward, and that's what may bring in some 
nicer weather come around here sometime around Thursday or so. Here's the weather map tonight. There's a stalled front along the east coast, and again, all that moisture just riding up from the south to the north. Eventually, if that front moves back westward enough, the showers will move away, and the sun will slowly get back in here. And we'll see what happens with Hugo and Iris. Let's check out our current readings in Central Park. The temperature is 66 degrees. That's all we got for the high today. Real cool day with northeast to easterly winds. The humidity at 97%. The pressure steady. 1.75 in the rain bucket, and it's still coming down. Here's the radar. Watch again. Everything moving from south to north. The next batch of rain right on top of the city with another one forming down here in southern Jersey. And those of you watching our program to the north, you're all sucked in in the rain. Nice dry spot, though, right now on the island. And that's a sign of some things to come as that front backs in from east to west. So occasional light rain, drizzle and fog. 61 in the city tonight, upper 50s north and west. Tomorrow, the showers will be around, scattered, with maybe a little sun late in the day, 76 degrees. Much better for Thursday and Friday with partly sunny skies. Temperatures will be in the 80s, low 80s. And we'll have to watch to see what Hugo will have an effect on us or not over the weekend. Morning, Corian. Let's go by that the chance has increased uh, greatly now that the chance for a strike across the southeast coast of the United States seems to be the apparent uh, next move for Hugo. Here's the satellite picture that goes into motion from earlier this morning, and you can see it's still on that steady west-northwest, or even more of a northwesterly path, let's say. The winds are still 105 miles an hour. The latest position, 190 miles northeast of uh, Grand Turk in the uh, southeast Bahamas. So, again, it is looking more and more likely that somewhere along the southeast coast of the United States, we're going to have to deal with the strike from Hugo probably Thursday night or on into Friday. Really, it's too early to speculate exactly where and exactly when, but what I've drawn up here is a chart that sort of indicates the greatest potential, at least that's what uh, the Hurricane Center is looking at, and that's what I really believe to be an area that is of concern, anywhere from Central Florida on up towards Cape Hatteras. Now remember, we track the hurricane as a center, as a point, but the storm really affects uh, an area from about 300 miles to 500 miles wide. So just because it goes, let's say, inland in North Florida, it doesn't mean that the folks up in South Carolina will not be feeling the effects of Hugo. I'll be back with more on that storm. We'll talk about Iris, too, and our own weather, which was awful today. I, I have a hunch that we'll see a little bit of sunshine come Thursday. But uh, we have another tough day to go through tomorrow, Mary. 68 degrees in town right now. Good evening, everybody. I hope you endured this very soggy day here in the Tri-State area. Gotten some reports of over four inches of rain in parts of the Garden State of New Jersey. And here in town, as you can see, we've had about one and three-quarter inches. Right now, 68 cool degrees with total saturation of the lower atmosphere, 100% RH. The winds are northeast at 9. The barometer steady at 30.18. A lot of rain in the bucket and more to come. Cloudy skies right now. And uh, to kind of tie into the feeling of today, even though we didn't have any thunder or lightning, I thought the gray skies and everything at times looked like they wanted to give us a little shot of electricity. Greg Geffner over in Brooklyn, New York, took this most wonderful shot of, obviously, lightning over the big town here. There's the uh, 59th Street Bridge, and mighty, mighty sharp shot. All right, here we go. Let's swing over, and I'll show you something else that's pretty sharp. This inverted trough, that's what you're looking at, friends. All of these clouds and all of the moisture that has been coming in today, no storm system per se, just a weakness in the atmosphere and a lot of moisture coming in on northeast winds, and we got two to four inches of rain here in our viewing area. Notice down to the south, separate in its circulation, Hurricane Hugo with the spiral bands wrapped around it, still trekking off to the northwest. Latest radar is still showing some pockets of heavy rain in New Jersey, lighter amounts over the city and up in Connecticut, out on the island, very little, just a little drizzle out there. The heaviest stuff is up in New York State and down across New Jersey. It's been running up from the south to the north all day on that general path. Tomorrow, we still have a chance of showers. Still a lot of gloomy weather around here with low clouds, especially in the morning, some drizzle, fog, a few showers. In the afternoon, maybe a few bright spots but the whole inclination of the weather pattern for the rest of the week is very unsettled, especially if Hugo continues to move towards the southeastern part of the nation and may try to make a little swing up the coast for the weekend. Weekend fashion, of course, but it could still contain a lot of rain for us, maybe come Saturday or Sunday. I have to say maybe, because you never know how those characters are going to move. Temps tonight, low 60s here in town, 50s in the suburbs. And that five-day outlook, Mary, a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of hope in here for Yay. Thursday and Friday, maybe a little sun at times. Also the chance, though, that the air could contain a shower every once in a while. But the weekend does not look good at this point. I think we are going to have some significant rain for the weekend, he said very carefully. Mm. Brad? Oh, we can use it, Bob. We can use yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Always. Just yeah. a minute when we look at the local map. Let's go and talk about our high and low for the day, and you'll see that we've only got up to 68 degrees, and that's our present temperature. So the warmest part of the day is right now, folks, below. 59, and in the city, we had an inch and three quarters of rain, but again, there's been more uh, rainfall totals elsewhere. 68 degrees right now, humidity socked in at 100%. East-northeast of the wind at 7, and the pressure 3018, and it's steady. And that easterly wind 
run, one of the reasons why we had so much rainfall because it just brought in tons of moisture from the Atlantic and the result was lots of rain. You can see these little rainfall numbers here, anywhere from 1.32 up at West Nyack to 2.19 down at Staten Island. There's 72 degrees right now. Look at Monroe Township though, 4.35. Uh, down at Westfield, 4.10. So <laughs> this is like our own little mini hurricane that caused all this rainfall across uh, uh, much of our tri-state area, and it was windy today as well. Speaking of hurricanes, we have uh, one to talk about out here, Hugo, 105 mile an hour winds, and Iris, a tropical storm right behind it with 70 mile an hour winds. These are the very latest coordinates I just got from the National Hurricane Center. Both of them are still moving off to the northwest. You'll see that now on the satellite movie loop that goes into motion. Hugo looking like it's getting a little bit better organized, so maybe it'll start strengthening, especially by tomorrow when it gets over uh, some more warm water here in the Bahamas. And behind it, we really have to watch Iris because both of them are basically moving towards the east coast of the United States. So we're going to have to keep a very close eye on it. Now, over here, there's a big ridge of high pressure, and that area of high pressure may act to sort of block the storms from coming directly up towards us, and the result will be that they may head in towards uh, the southeastern states. Still too early to tell, but we'll let you know. You can see our moisture today. <laughs> we were just socked in there with the clouds but it's all drifting to the west. So tomorrow the showers will be pushed a bit farther westward and better news is coming up in the forecast. Look at the radar now, pouring in western New Jersey as I'm speaking to you tonight, with the rain, rain letting up considerably across uh, parts of Long Island and in through Connecticut. Here's the national map and the reason why a little funnel system just south of the area extending down the coast with all the rain running basically from south to north, the dry air in the midsection of the country, and you'll see tomorrow the front basically breaks down. So. We'll see some dry air coming in here tomorrow. It'll still rain a little bit during the forecast tomorrow, but dry air coming in here certainly by Thursday, I think. Drizzle and fog, some light rain overnight. 61 in the city, upper 50s north and west. Tomorrow, more showers around, but again, scattered. Nothing like today. High of 76 tomorrow. Better news for Thursday, partly sunny. Temperatures pretty much sticking into the near 80 degree mark. 82 on Friday, then the weekend. We'll have to watch to see what those two little... Boy, and it's a lot different from yesterday morning. It is warmer and it is much more humid it is also going to be a drier day we had tremendous amounts of rain up to four inches or even more in some sections of new jersey and some flooding yesterday and last night we do have cloudy skies and fog around now it's 72 degrees but it will be warming up and most of the day at least near the coast will be dry we're going to take a look first though at what hurricane hugo has been doing over the last uh well since sunday night actually well, this is the current, this is the current location of Hugo and Tropical Storm Iris. You can see the latest coordinates there. Hugo at 24.5 and 70.2, 460 miles east of Nassau. All right, there's the track since Sunday night. You can see it lost some of its intensity after it hit Puerto Rico. It, it diminished from 140 to 105 winds, but now it's starting to get better organized and it may be increasing again. It was a category four, dropped to a category two now, but it's almost up to a category three. So it could be category three, which is considered a major hurricane as it approaches the United States coast. Of course, our rain had nothing to do with Hugo. Now let's take a look back at our hurricane tracking map and you'll see the track of Hugo going across Puerto Rico, missing the Bahamas, but it may be starting to show signs of curving a little bit to the west, and that's what may be happening because of that high pressure area way to the north that I've been telling you about for uh, the last couple of days. That threat would continue to increase as Hugo moves to the west-northwest toward Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. It's impossible to pinpoint that yet, but a hurricane watch will likely be issued later today for a portion of the southeast coast. It's a ver almost a certainty that Hugo is going to hit the United States coast before too long, and Iris is a possibility, too, following right in its tracks. We'll be telling you more about that later on. Now let's go to our forecast, which is an improvement over yesterday. We have a little sunshine in some parts of the area now, Especially northwest there will be some showers, but even that weather will be improving. High of 72 degrees and very humid. Tonight, mostly cloudy with some more fog. Low temperature 70 in the city, near 60 north and west. The five-day forecast near 80 with partly cloudy skies Thursday. 82 on Friday, partly cloudy. And then the remnants of Hugo, not Hugo itself, the remnants may be coming up later on in the weekend and giving us some rain. There's been a lot of misconceptions and mist floating around here about this hurricane. We'll be telling you more about that major event. factor in determining where this storm is going to go as well as what's happening over the continental United States. Is there any way that that hurricane, what, what's the hopeful sign that we should look for so that hurricane can be pushed right off the southern uh, coast? Well, if the high pressure area that's out here would weaken a little bit and then recurve, that would be the best thing for us to have happen. Right, Bob Sheets, thank you so much and we'll be checking in with you later on this morning.
Edmonds has been in there, and they measured the lowest pressure that we've seen since it left Puerto Rico. So there may be some trends here for some slight strengthening taking place at this time. 105 miles per hour now. It may gain a little bit of strength before it uh, reaches the coast. And again, your bottom line projection is Florida is safe, but when should the Carolinas worry? Well, they need to start uh, paying very close attention to the storm. If we have to put a hurricane watch up there uh, late today, then they sort of bring up the level of uh, uh, preparedness in that activity. And then we go to a hurricane warning in about 24 hours before we expected the storm to uh, make uh, landfall. So they don't do anything unnecessary right now, even during the watch. Just tune up a little bit. But when the hurricane warning... Okay. Had uh, Boris Gagorovich, who was out there today, got some nice pictures of a little fog and a little hay. Boris Gagorovich, friend of Boris Gudinov. It's good enough for him, it's good enough for us. No. But I'm bad, bad enough, right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what we have now in Midtown is cloudy weather. The rain has ended, uh, but we still have a few little sprinkles here and there. The humidity is 91%. And the reason we've been telling you for the last couple of days is an onshore flow of easterly winds, which brings a lot of moisture. Of course, we showed you earlier where Hurricane Hugo is. It's now 360 miles east of uh, Nassau in the Bahamas. The storm continues very slowly, 12 miles an hour in a northwesterly direction, which means it continues to head toward the southeast coast of the United States. Now, hurricanes, as you know by now and you've heard over the past, generally have a track that could change at almost any moment. This is why there's great hesitancy in trying to predict where it will hit land. It could just as well begin up and make a sharp right-hand turn. It could loop to the left. It could just about do anything. Right now, the projected movement is toward the Carolina, Georgia coast, but we don't know where. And what we have in our own area is that line of clouds that's sitting on top of us. It's been there the last couple of days. Those strong easterly winds continue to bring moisture in from the ocean. If you want sunshine, just go into western Pennsylvania, New York State. That's where the weather remains quite lovely. But for us, a mostly cloudy day, Chance of scattered showers, kind of a sticky day. High temperatures tomorrow in the low 80s, and more of that fog for tonight as uh, there was this morning, so that may mean a little bit of a traffic problem early tomorrow. And tomorrow, we expect variable cloudiness continued quite mild with a high tomorrow around. So, CBS News and your local CBS station will be tracking the hurricane in the critical days and hours ahead as it approaches the U.S. East Coast. Right now, the hurricane is north toward the northwest at about 17 miles an hour. If it continues in that direction at that speed, remember it picked up speed today and could pick up more speed tomorrow, the hurricane will most likely track this way over the next 36 hours, possibly heading for a Carolina crash by late Thursday night or early Friday morning. Underscore that this is just a best guess track projection about the center of the hurricane from the National Hurricane Center in Florida. People who live along the southeast coast are listening up and taking no chances, as Aaron Hayes reports. The Navy knows when it's time to go. Cruisers, destroyers, support ships, about 20 of them, sailed out of the Charleston shipyard today, headed for sea, away from Hugo. Not everyone appears as concerned as the military here, perhaps because more than half the people who live along the eastern coast have never been through a major hurricane, and they don't know what to expect. I, I don't want it to be a bad hurricane. I myself am not really ready. The last hurricane through here was David, 10 years ago. A mild hurricane, it did some damage, but nothing compared to what Hugo has already done and might do if it comes ashore here. Since David, there's been a lot of new construction. Much of it rushed through without regard to the threat of a hurricane. And experts who watched the hasty buildup were a Hugo could quickly break it down. We might well see damage at wind speeds uh, as low as 70 or 80 miles an hour. As the wind speeds go up, then you go into perhaps the high-rise buildings um, and complete collapse of some of the wood frame construction. Winds aren't the only worry. Some of the new development is only a few feet above sea level. A storm surge from Hugo could put much of this underwater. That's been enough to convince quite a few people here to start getting ready. Don't take no chances. Houses are being sealed up. Charleston City Hall boarded up. Schools closed for the rest of the week. Store shelves going there as people accept the possibility of Hugo crashing in. As Hugo continues to head this way, plenty of weary people will start leaving, possibly as early as tonight, leaving boarded up homes and high rises to an uncertain fate all along this coast. Aaron Hayes, CBS News, Charleston, South Carolina. Joining us live now is CBS News consultant Neil Frank, one of the world's 
foremost experts on hurricanes and now the chief meteorologist for our affiliated station, KHOU in Houston. Dr. Frank, what do we need to know, and specifically, what do those people in the southeast part of the United States need to be aware of? Okay, Dan, the most important thing today to note is that the storm picked up forward speed, moving 15 to 20 miles an hour. That means that hurricane warnings may be posted tomorrow in portions of the hurricane watch area, and that also means that there's going to be an evacuation notice. People need to get ready tonight to evacuate in the morning if they're too told to do so. Now, this dome of water Dr. Keats talked about earlier in the yeah. broadcast, what's that about? Well, that's the storm surge, and the wind's blowing the water towards the coast, and it can't run away, so it just builds up, and that's why people need to be ready to evacuate when they're told to get out. And when you see the pictures of the hurricane, the area on the upside, the north side of the hurricane, are in the most danger. That's right. On the right-hand side, looking in the direction that the storm is moving. Dr. Neil Franklin Houston, thanks. We'll be talking to you as time goes along. Okay. And that's tonight's CBS Evening News. Stay tuned to this station for more on the hurricane. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ari Povich. All eyes are on Hurricane Hugo as the killer storm starts to get closer to the United States. That storm, which has already claimed 25 lives, roared toward the eastern seaboard, packing a punch of more than 100 miles an hour. A hurricane watch has been issued now for the area from northern Florida to the Carolinas. And Nick will have more on that in a moment. But first, a report on what is said to be turning into a very serious situation in the U.S. Virgin Islands. There are conflicting reports, but word is that St. Croix is in chaos. Just a short time ago, President Bush announced that he is prepared to send in troops if necessary, and the Coast Guard has started evacuations there. And in Puerto Rico, help is also on the way. It's no wonder that the entire east coast of the United States is nervous. Each new report from the Caribbean serves as a warning. This could happen to us. In Puerto Rico, Hugo's wrath is going to be felt for a long time to come. Damage is running in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Drinking water, something usually everybody takes for granted, is said to be in short supply. The first help has arrived, but it's just a drop in the bucket. A more immediate concern is where to put the homeless. There are thousands, uh, tens of thousands of people who are homeless. Uh, the winds just, uh, you know, blew up the small wooden houses or took away uh, their sink roofs. And these people right now are in shelters, and we're going to have a serious problem in terms of providing permanent housing for them. Things are even more desperate on the U.S. Virgin Island of St. Croix. Residents and unlucky tourists are said to be totally stranded. There are horror stories of looting, gunfire, and total anarchy. When I leave my boat right now to go back into town, we, we have to carry flare guns with us to protect ourselves. We have to carry a club. We have to uh, run around uh, lots of parked cars and people shooting and stealing gasoline and going nuts around here. We need troops immediately. Everything is down. We have 100% building damage, 90% building devastation. The local officials and police have, have done absolutely nothing. The White House says a half million dollars in emergency relief is on the way. Meanwhile, people from Florida to the Carolinas stocked up on supplies just in case. The Navy moved ships from Charleston, South Carolina, out of Hugo's way. And at Cape Canaveral, they're prepared to move the space shuttle Atlantis off the launch pad to avoid another costly casualty. If you're concerned about the situation in the U.S. Virgin Islands, there is a 24-hour number you can call in Washington for more information on that. It is area code 202-343-6816. Goran? And Maury here at home. Relief efforts are intensifying. A local radio station, Hot 97, WQHT, is sponsoring a benefit concert to help the needy in Puerto Rico. Geraldo Rivera and DJ Freddie Colon will be the hosts. It's scheduled for Sunday at the much. Nassau Coliseum. And our Nick Gregory, of course, is watching Hugo's every move. And he's here now to tell us what the latest is, Nick. Well, Coran, we're still seeing that northwestward movement, and you can see on the satellite loop that started back on Sunday. Look at how it continues to move northwest. We're just missing the Bahamas, and now is located about 600 miles to the southeast of Savannah, Georgia, and continues to move to the northwest. Thus, our uh, uh, advice from the Hurricane Center has been to put up the hurricane watch from Cape Hatteras right on down to St. Augustine, and this hurricane watch is in effect right now, and probably we'll start to see the hurricane warnings go up sometime tomorrow. If this uh, track continues and the movement of the storm northwest at about 20 miles per hour, we could see landfall somewhere maybe near coastal Georgia or South Carolina very early Friday morning 
And then from then, the storm would be moving inland to create lots of rain for the entire southeast and mid-Atlantic states. I'll be back with an update on Hugo and, of course, our own forecast, which will be affected by Hugo as well. Morning this evening. On the Lower East Side, the FDR Drive is flooded. Big problems on the northbound Brooklyn-Queens Expressway, the Belt Parkway, and the Williamsburg Bridge. Dozens of New Jersey residents are back home tonight after floods forced them out. Places like Jamesburg and Central Jersey were hard hit. They had to open the floodgates at... Uh, Lake uh, Alapan, right? Manalapan. 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 You right. got it. You're, you're, that's right. You're from down there. You know that part of the And let's go now with the latest from Nick. Well, I'll tell you what, Maureen Coran, some of that flooding that you just saw there is going to continue because we have some more rain in the area, and that's going to continue for another couple of hours. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. First of all, again, we want to talk about Hugo and Iris. Hugo, the main concern, because that's the immediate threat to the United States with 105 mile an hour winds, still moving off to the northwest at 17 miles an hour, that position about 600 miles southeast of Savannah, and right behind it is Iris, and look at this. Some thunderstorms from Iris may cross the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, just what they don't need because they're trying to recover from Hugo. Now watch the satellites that go into motion. You can see the uh, clouds moving again generally to the northwest. The hurricane watch is up for the southeast coast of the United States, and landfall, if this course continues, will be sometime early Friday morning. For us, you can see we've had clouds moving up and down the east coast all day long, and you can see now the bright white clouds, those are the showers and thunderstorms that are moving on through. They should start to diminish overnight, and we should get into some drier weather tomorrow as this little trough that's been along the east coast dies down and moves off to the west. But right now, again, it's raining all along the eastern seaboard and scattered about. And then the problem is, once Hugo moves inland, when will that rain get to us? And it looks like it will be coming into our upcoming forecast. Here's the rain right now. Some heavy rain moving right across the city towards the western sections of uh, Suffolk County right now. And another batch of rain geared to come through. That's in southwestern New Jersey. So we've got another bout of rain before this starts tapering off to drizzle and fog later tonight. 70 in the city, 60 to 65 north and west. Tomorrow, clouds and fog in the morning. I think it should give way to a mixture of clouds and sunshine in the afternoon, the high of 82 degrees. A mostly cloudy day on Friday, and then Saturday, we may see the remnants of Hugo pass by us, and then a, a cooling trend into Sunday as we will dry out, hopefully, by the end of the weekend. I'll have an update at 10. Morning, Corinne. All right, thank you very much, Nick. That's Fox News at 7, everyone. Thanks for being with us. I'm Mario Povich. And I'm Corinne Mahalik. John Rowe and I will oh, be the FDR turn into a lake. There are also some big problems on the BQE, the Bell Parkway, and the Williamsburg Bridge. The floods also knocked out the 2, 3, and F trains to Brooklyn. Corian? A real mess. Now, Hugo, where is it, Nick? Well, it's a, we've just got the latest coordinates in from the National Hurricane Center. It's about 525 miles now uh, to the southeast of Savannah, Georgia, still moving on that northwesterly course. And I'll show you what it looks like on the satellite picture in just a minute. If it keeps up this course, landfall probably about midnight or so tomorrow night, right along the South Carolina coastline. We'll see what happens. Again, as John just pointed out, it has been a mess in our area. Look at the water on the road. And uh, we've got some more rain to tell you about in the next couple of hours. 78 degrees, the high, the low 71. In the city, 2.10 inches of rain today. That brings a two-day total up over four inches. 72 degrees right now. We're socked in with humidity. We're in this very tropical air. That's what's causing these very tropical-type showers. Winds out of the, downpours really, winds out of the south at 5, and the pressure, uh, strangely enough, is rising at 30.20. Now, temperatures across the area, all in the low 70s. But what I want to point out to you tonight are the rainfall totals. They barely had anything on the east end today. And in fact, they had about 7 hours of sun, sunshine there today. But look to the west. Island, 4.13 today, 2-day total, 8.38 inches of rain. And I got a report from our observer, Mount Owen Township, that a lot of the schools were closed down there because there was so much water on the roads. And these are all the rainfall totals up around two to three inches. It's a lot of rain. And a little more to come tonight. You'll see that on the radar in just a minute. Let's get to Hugo. These are the latest coordinates. 27.5 north, 74.0 west. Still uh, strengthening a little bit. Winds are now up to 110, while Iris is weakening behind it. So we're not too concerned with Iris right now, except it will bring some thunderstorms, unfortunately, to Puerto Rico. We're going to watch this system now go into motion. And you can see the track that it's taking, basically still on that northwesterly direction, right towards the southeast coast of the United States, where the hurricane watches are up right now. You can see we're covered up with clouds along the east coast, and those clouds have been dumping rain. Look at the radar. Still everything moving basically to the north-northeast at about 20 miles per hour, but it is lightening up in the last couple of hours, so hopefully this is going to be the last batch, and we'll just deal with a little bit of drizzle the rest of the night. This little trough has been stuck along the east coast, and the rain has just been riding up it from south to north, and hopefully by tomorrow that trough will be a bit further westward and a lot weaker to allow us to at least see some sunshine and a very small chance for rain while Hugo, again, will be bearing down towards the southeast coast of the United States. Here's our forecast. Drizzle uh, and fog after the steady rain ends. 70 in the city, 60 to 65 north and west. Tomorrow, a better day. 
with a mixture of clouds and sunshine. The high, a very warm, 82 degrees. That's warm for this time of the year. We're going to have to watch the clouds to return on Friday, 82, and then the remnants of Hugo could be coming by here on Saturday. We'll keep you posted on that. And Sunday, cooler air and drying out. Glenn will give you an update, of course, tomorrow morning on the first report, and I'll give you an update on Hot 97 Radio. Coran? Dead aim at that area, Savannah, Georgia, North Carolina, anywhere along that region, looks like it could be causing problems. Now, as you can see, again, any time a hurricane is out over water, it can take whatever turns it wants, but it looks like by Friday it will be on land, quickly downgraded to a tropical storm, then a tropical depression and low pressure, and bring a lot of rain up into our region. But again, anything can happen between now and the time it makes landfall. And even once it makes landfall, it can go back out into the water and reform. So we are just going to keep, have to keep monitoring this, and we will keep you posted. In any event, it looks like we've got a wet weekend coming, and we'll have details on that. A couple of days is a good thing, because by tomorrow, we're going to get some of the remnants from Hugo. We want to tell you first about last night, show you the weather conditions during the crash. This is a radar from New York City, the red area. Oh, right in the middle of the red area is LaGuardia Airport. The yellow indicating some pretty heavy showers. As a matter of fact, exactly at 11.25, LaGuardia Airport came in with a special report uh, indicating occasionally very heavy rains. The uh, ceiling dropped from 4,000 feet to 500 feet. Now, of course, I've seen weather conditions a lot worse than that. Some planes take off in that kind of weather all the time. But it certainly wasn't good weather, and uh, there's no way to tell at this point whether that was a factor in the crash. Now, as far as... The rain that we've had, tremendous amounts of rain, especially in central Jersey, down in my neck of the woods, Island, over eight inches of rain in the last two days. Middlesex County, Monmouth County, you could see Bridgewater with four, nearly five, Staten Island with five, and those inland sections in Jersey, the hilly terrain, that's the area that's most vulnerable to flooding from Hugo once Hugo comes up here. So we're, we're going to look for some very serious flooding if indeed the remnants of Hugo, not Hugo itself, we're not going to get hurricane force winds or anything. Here's the time lapse. Pictures from um, Hurricane Hugo. It's pretty well organized. Winds of 110 miles an hour now. And we'll show you the coordinates in just a minute. You can see the clouds all up and down the east coast. And thunderstorms have already come into the Carolina coast way ahead, hundreds of miles ahead of Hugo. The red area indicates where the hurricane warnings are now in effect. Hugo should strike the Georgia or South Carolina coast late tonight. It's moving 17 miles an hour, faster than yesterday. The pressure is even down a little bit. Now let's take a look quickly at our local radar. You can see a couple of showers not too far away, but most of the activity from yesterday has moved to the east. And look at all of that thunderstorm activity in the Carolinas already. Hundreds of miles ahead of that. Now let's take a look at the forecast for us. Today, there may be a shower or two. We start off with some fog, then some sunshine, very warm and very muggy. We've got tropical air over us here, high temperature of 82 degrees. There is some flooding on some of the rivers and still some standing water, so take it easy with that. Mostly cloudy tonight, but probably dry, but more fog, 71 in the city, 60s north and west. The five-day forecast indicates the rain from Hugo coming in perhaps by tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow night may be the worst of it, and it could be ending by Saturday morning, followed by much cooler and clearer weather. With all the rain we've had the last two days, and with a hurricane moving up, it fortunately it's going to be moving very fast, there is a great potential. All right, watch and tropical storm warning south to St. Augustine, Florida. Hugo is still packing winds of 110 miles an hour and has picked up a little more forward speed. The hurricane may make landfall by tonight or tomorrow morning. People along the South Carolina coast are taking the warnings to heart. Thousands of people move inland to higher ground. They've been packing their belongings for the last 24 hours. Coastal residents made an early start across the only road taking them to the mainland. Elsewhere, people have been stocking up on groceries and buying extra supplies of bottled water, batteries, and candles. In Charleston, residents boarded up their homes and stores. Even City Hall was protected with plywood. People were evacuated from Kiawa Island, one of the barrier islands south of Charleston. It's getting closer to the U.S. mainland, and the National Hurricane Center director, Bob Sheets, joins us once again from the center in Coral Gables, Florida. What's the latest, Bob? Well, good morning, Harry. It's uh, continuing to move towards the northwest. You see on the NOAA weather satellite here, the eye of the hurricane has been well 
well displayed here, moving northwest. We expect it to move on this course, maybe a little bit left early, and then turn a little bit right as it moves over the coast. The highest probabilities are in the Savannah, Charleston, Myrtle Beach area. And how many, uh, what's the winds and how fast is this traveling right now? It's on a borderline of a Category 3 on our Saffir Simpson scale. That means 110 to 115 mile per hour winds at this time. Pressure dropped a little bit. Big problem on the coast is going to be the storm surge. We're expecting uh, 10 feet or more along some of those areas. And what time do you think it's going to hit? That's a good, big critical question because if it comes at high tide, which is about 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, then you add another 3 to 4 feet to that uh, storm surge with waves on top of that. We're looking sometime tomorrow. We hope that it'll be a little after 2 a.m., but indeed it could speed up and it could be 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, do you have a sense that this storm, once it hits, will go inland, or what would cause it to crawl up the coast as some have done in the past? Well, I'm afraid it's going to do the latter. As a matter of fact, our forecast is to bring it in here and then turn up like this because there's a trough of low pressure that's now over the uh, middle part of the country that's moving across the into this area. will help turn it towards the north. And, and indeed, the problem you will have now is the heavy rains and flash floods. They're already saturated there right now because they've already had some floods there. Bob Sheets, thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Let's get a check on the rest of our weather. Here. Thanks, Glenn. Hi, thanks, Barbara. Still cloudy, still fog around 73 degrees, and the humidity is 100%. A very muggy, tropical-type day, but not as uh, wet as the last couple have been. It's pretty wet already in the southeast. We're talking about more than 300 miles away from the center of Hugo. Look at the showers and thunderstorms in Georgia and South Carolina. You can even see some spiral bands starting to show up out in the Atlantic, hundreds of miles ahead of Hugo. And we'll, we'll show you the latest on uh, Hugo. The next update is due from the Hurricane Center around 9. We may be able to get that information a little bit before that because the pressure continues to lower. And if it lowers any more, it could be upgraded to a Category 3 hurricane, which then puts it in the major hurricane category. That plus the fact that it could conceivably strike near the time of high tide along the, the South Carolina or Georgia, that could make it doubly bad. Of course, if it speeds up and hits at low tide or slows down and hits at low tide, it'll make a tremendous difference. We're talking about 10 times the damage at high tide versus low tide. That's how crucial. It's not exactly where it goes or exactly how strong it is. The timing of this hurricane is more important than anything else because of the way the coastline's set up. Nick Gregor will be telling you more about that. Fox News at 7 and at 10. Let's take a look at our forecast now, because the remnants of Hugo, once it does go in late tonight, is going to come up in this direction. And it's going to come up so fast that we're going to have some problems with it. Today, fog and some sun, warm and humid with a couple showers possible, 82 degrees, mostly cloudy tonight, some more fog, 71 in the city, 60s north and west. The five-day forecast now, as Hugo accelerates up the east side of the Appalachian, we could get some strong winds late tomorrow, tomorrow night. We're talking, I'm talking 50 mile an hour winds in some parts of the area, and also torrential rains for a period of time, although the hurricane, or the remnants of the hurricane may be moving out just as fast as it comes in. So Saturday could end up a little bit better with some showers and then much cooler and drier as we head toward the end of the weekend. Maybe we'll have an update toward the end of the show. Stay tuned for that. Now back to Barbara. Glenn, once again, thanks very much. News, this day may come to a close with still more destruction. Hundreds of thousands of people in the southeast are scrambling to get out of Hurricane Hugo's way Charleston, South Carolina is typical. As the storm brought rain this morning, residents began boarding up their homes and stocking up on groceries. South Carolina's governor has declared an emergency, ordering the coast evacuated and calling in the National Guard to help move thousands inland. In the meantime, President Bush is sending more than a thousand military police to the U.S. Virgin Islands, where massive looting has been reported. Now, the soldiers are especially needed in St. Croix, where there are reports now that local police have joined prison escapees and machete-armed mobs in that looting. Brian? Dr. Frank Field has been monitoring this storm for days from the start. He's here now with the very latest. Frank. Thank you, Brian. First, a break in our own weather. It is cloudy now in the Midtown area, but that break won't last too long. Right now, it is 76 degrees. The rain has ended. There's a glimmer of sun in some parts of our tri-state air. The humidity is 97 percent northeasterly winds. Barometer is falling, and we're going to get back again into the rain later this week. And here is Hugo. Current position of the storm as it heads up into the southeast coast is 300 miles southeast of Savannah, Georgia. It is moving at 17 miles per hour. Let's take a look at the position of the storm now. That particular storm is sitting off the coast, and at its point of progress, it should come in somewhere. Again, this is about a five or 600-mile broad swath of, of wet weather 
strong winds, high tides, with the severest portion expected to take place north of the eye of the storm wherever it hits. The most likely point now is right on the border between Carolina and Georgia. The storm, as I said, moving at 17 miles an hour. The winds are up to 105 miles an hour, which means it is a terribly destructive storm and should cause a lot of damage along the coast. As for our own weather, we're still bogged in that line of clouds and wet weather that sits along the coast. We have that break today. But as you see, Hugo moves inland. It will move up along the coast, simply bringing a large area of wet weather to all of the middle Atlantic states in the northeast. Today, that variable cloudiness will give way to clouds and fog tonight. And for tomorrow, cloudy skies. And once again, the rain will redevelop in that heat. And that will continue on into Saturday. And we'll be watching Hugo very closely all afternoon and tonight. So we'll feel it tomorrow morning in either Georgia or South Carolina. Al Roker is following the path of the storm from our News 4 Weather Center. Al? Well, Chuck, the storm continues to move more, a little more north. This is the big problem. We originally, when this first got started, it looked like Miami might, not, might be a problem. Now they're talking Myrtle Beach. Here's the latest on Hurricane Hugo at 6 o'clock, 31.2 north, 78.2 west. It's 180 miles south of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Winds are at 135 miles per hour. This is now a Category 4 storm moving northwesterly at 20 miles per hour. It becomes more dangerous as it gets closer to shore. Now, here's the projected track of Hugo. Again, for tonight, we are looking at the Hugo still off the shore. It is going to start to push its way onshore, and then once it does, it will become a tropical storm, but it doesn't look like it's going to degrade too much and make a beeline for New York City, and that's going to be a problem because we are going to be on the easterly flow of that, and that's going to be the heavy and strongest winds and the highest rains, 5 to 10 inches of rain possible with this storm. They have upgraded the chance of Hugo passing within 65 miles of New York City by 8 a.m. Saturday to 25%, 19% out on Long Island, 26% in Atlantic City. So this is going to be a major, major problem for us as we go into the weekend. A lot of rain, a lot of wind, and we'll continue to track it for you. Chuck and Pat. All right, Al, thank you. Thank you. The governor of South Carolina ordered the mandatory evacuation of the South Carolina coast as Hugo approaches. Hugo would be the first hurricane to make a direct hit on South Carolina since Hazel back in 1954. News 4 Steve Handelsman is standing by in Charleston where windows are boarded up and people have stockpiled food and water. And Jim Upshaw is in Myrtle Beach. First, let's go to Steve. Thanks very much, Pat. Here in Charleston, South Carolina, the rain has abated a bit compared to what it was an hour ago and the wind has dropped but not the level of fear here. Most residents who live in low-lying areas, and there's a lot of low-lying countryside in this part of uh, South Carolina, most of those residents are terrified about the reports they've heard that the hurricane will arrive on a high tide and push ahead of it its own hurricane tide, a so-called storm surge that could cause an increase in the height of the sea here by some 17 feet. Despite that concern, the word is out tonight, Hugo is coming. Uh, there is an evacuation in effect. All people are asked to leave the island as soon as possible. The order to leave went out this morning, and on low-lying barrier islands south of Charleston, people by the thousands locked up and fled Hurricane Hugo. Something really bad, and you don't want to be, you don't want to be in this way. Wealthy residents are leaving a lot behind. We packed up our our most valuable things, being our best, our clothes, jewelry. First, we're going to take our dog and we're just going inland. <laughs> Others are leaving, mostly empty houses. And thank God I don't have much in the world because I can fit everything I have right in this truck. Police this morning blocked off the bridge to Isle of Palms and refused to allow even property owners back on. When a hurricane comes through, it's going to blow everything to smell the rings, and if we can't board up the windows, in fact, so quickly was the evacuation ordered this morning that many exposed homes here have not been boarded up. David Hatchell did put up plywood, but he figures this beachfront house is a goner. Well, the water will come over these dunes, and then, it'll, and then when, on the backwash, it'll pull, it'll pull all the sand away from the house and all the foundation away from the house, and then it'll settle, and then the wind will blow it over. Downtown Charleston was nearly deserted, but the only grocery store open in town was mobbed. Because everybody was afraid of the stone. But for most, the plan is cover up windows, secure boats and planes, even sandbag in low-lying areas. Get me ready for Mr. Hugo. Yeah. He'd be in a little while, sir. No one likes it, but that seems to be the truth. Just about everybody.
No reports of problems on the evacuation here. Charleston is about as buttoned up as she can be. This is Steve Handelsman, News 4, reporting live from Charleston, South Carolina. Now let's go up the coast a bit to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. News 4's Jim Upshaw's to report. Jim? Well, well, Steve, even here in a protected area in the inland waterway, sort of behind Myrtle Beach, which is right over there, the winds are picking up, and we hear that they're gusting to 60 miles an hour, not far offshore. Hugo bearing down and beginning to frighten people who've been calm here so far. Officials are operating, as Al Roker, Roker indicated, under the assumption now what they call the highest probability that Hugo will hit right at Myrtle Beach with the brunt of its force. Officials can't do much, of course. All day they've been trying to evacuate people. The governor's ordered everyone within five miles of the shoreline to be evacuated inland. They've been making announcements aimed at making sure that everyone gets at least this far. And there have been some impressive results. Escaping from the onrushing hurricane, as rising waves pounded the beaches, cars and vans clogged highways heading inland from Myrtle Beach today, carrying many of the 75,000 tourists and 27,000 permanent residents ordered out of the city, some hanging on in nearby hotels, including this bride and groom on their honeymoon. I'll never forget it. <laughs> never forget it. We'll come back, I think. And I've never been through a hurricane before, so maybe they'll... Do something to see, hopefully, without any damage. I'm more worried about my car than anything else with the flooding. The final boards went up on beachfront businesses, almost certain to take heavy damage if, as expected, the ocean surges perhaps 20 feet higher than normal. A lot of erosion might take a few buildings out down the coast um, where the beach is shorter. City officials are preparing for their hardest hurricane siege in years. The uh, intensity of the storm has increased significantly since about noon today. And it also is tending to vary northward. So Georgetown, Myrtle Beach, and even North Myrtle Beach seem to be in a worse position now than they were a couple of hours ago. And even that looked bad. Now things look much worse. We're going to be here watching it tonight. As long as we don't get evacuated, we're trying to hang on and see what happens as Hugo hits Myrtle Beach. I'm Jim Upshaw reporting live from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Chuck Pat. Thank you, Jim, and thanks to Steve as well. Well, in Puerto Rico, power is beginning to flicker back on. Ooh. Hurricane Hugo, there he blows, whipping up extreme danger along the Atlantic coast, ready to take the southeast and later the northeast by storm. This is the CBS Evening News, Dan Rattle reporting. Good evening. The hurricane has grown into a more powerful and deadlier Category 4 on a five-scale hurricane, and it's set to attack the southeastern United States overnight by air and by sea. The hurricane now packs killer winds of an estimated 135 miles an hour and a lot of water. It is the strongest and most dangerous storm since Hurricane Hazel in 1954. The hurricane also carries the potential for a, quote, lethal storm surge, meaning a devastating wall of water 12 to 15 feet high. The map reminds us of how far this hurricane has come from out over the Atlantic and how much it is fed on the energizing Atlantic Ocean waters. It's now estimated to be about 180 miles south of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Forward motion, 20 miles an hour, toward the northwest in the direction of the southeast U.S. mainland. Best bet computer projection has the eye or center of the storm making a Carolina crash possibly as early as midnight Eastern time a bad time because that's just before high tide. Most likely target, Myrtle Beach, possibly at high tide, that would dramatically increase the danger from a storm surge. Official hurricane warnings are up all along the coast from Florida's northern border through most of North Carolina. That means the hurricane is likely to strike somewhere within that area within the next 24 hours. Mass evacuations are underway throughout the hurricane warning area. That includes the coast of Georgia, of course. CBS News reporter Scott Pelley is there. Late this afternoon, Hurricane Hugo pushed a wave of evacuees onto highways leading out of Savannah, Georgia. An estimated 200,000 residents and tourists are seeking higher ground. This is a notice of evacuation. We're asking everyone, please be off the island by 3 o'clock this afternoon. The evacuation of the barrier islands began early this morning. Hugo is expected to hit during high tide, increasing the threat of severe flooding along the Georgia and South Carolina coast. The island will be covered. We know that the road will be underwater, and there's no way to get off the island once that road is covered. On the resort island of Hilton Head, roads were jammed with late evacuees. Here, 30,000 residents and tourists were ordered to leave. 
worst problem the people are trying to get off the island and waited too long. We've been asked to evacuate. They're in the evacuating the nursing home and we're going to leave. On Tybee Island, just east of Savannah, residents of a nursing home were among 5,000 islanders packing up. 19th century homes and historic landmarks were closed just when electricity to the island was shut off. Despite the strengthening winds, some still refused to leave. Just another hurricane for it, I'm concerned. We might have a little water surge, but we've had water up to Butler Avenue before. A hurricane declaration. On the mainland, Savannah prepared for high winds and a possible flood along the historic waterfront. Some storm supplies ran out days ago. The last time a hurricane of this magnitude hit the Savannah area was about 100 years. I just years. settle in for the storm. Dan? First faint edge is already beginning to move in. Aaron, there's generally a, a, an eerie feeling that settles over an area just before a big hurricane. Has that happened there yet? Yes, you know, this morning, Dan, it was so calm, so beautiful, and so peaceful right at dawn. And people were playing along the battery, along the waterfront, saying it's so difficult to believe that a hurricane's going to move in. Well, that, the scene dramatically changed later today. You saw people really in a hurry to get out of here. An eerie stillness, but not that peaceful calm we saw at dawn. Aaron Hayes, and the Weather Bureau says they'd better believe. About 75 miles up coast from Charleston is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the hurricane is projected to make landfall overnight. CBS News correspondent Frank Courier is in Myrtle Beach. Frank? Dan, there's that same eerie sense of danger here on the deserted streets of downtown Myrtle Beach. It is dinner hour. There is nearly, there's no one on the streets at all, an occasional fire truck or a tow truck. What people here seem to fear most is a repeat of that Hurricane Hazel, the killer storm that struck the coast uh, just north of here back in 1954. The 110 mile an hour wind slammed the coast right at high tide. And of course, if that scenario repeats tonight, they're talking locally here about preparing for a storm surge of up to 19 feet. Now, that would be a good 12 feet above what is normally high tide along the Myrtle Beach coast. Dan? Thanks, Frank. The hurricane warning area stretches along most of the Carolina coast as well as the Georgia coast and some of the upper Florida coast. Correspondent Mark Phillips is on the scene 65 miles up from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, in Wilmington, North Carolina. Dan, I'm standing here on the Coast Guard dock in Wilmington, North Carolina, standing here in front of the Cape Fear River, very aptly named on this evening. The tidal range on this river normally runs in the five-foot range with a storm surge of 10 or 15 feet on top of that. Where I'm standing could well be under a good deal of water, perhaps another five or 10 feet above my head. Behind me is a street called Water Street. One of the Coast Guard seamen around here said that is a very aptly named street for this part of the world at a time like this. Dan? Thanks, Mark. High winds, high tides, flash flooding, all very dangerous. We've been talking a lot about something else called the storm surge. That's because it is possibly the biggest threat from any hurricane, accounting for nine out of 10 hurricane deaths over the years. The storm surge is formed at the center or eye of a hurricane. This is a cross-section drawing. Low pressure in the eye draws the ocean water upward, forming that huge wall of water. As the hurricane approaches the coast, waves as high as eight feet start pounding the shore. Then, as the eye hits land, the storm surge roars in like a giant bulldozer, maybe 15 feet high. In the worst cases, this happens at high tide, adding three or four feet to that wall of water. If Hurricane Hugo does indeed hit the east coast at high tide, it could cause an even greater amount of destruction. Now, still to come on tonight's CBS Evening News, hurricane expert Neil Frank on his view of the danger and the track of this storm. Juan Vasquez in St. Croix where the hurricane was only the beginning of big trouble, and James Hattori on a school bus that went underwater in Texas. Special hurricane edition of 48 hours tonight at 8 Eastern time on this station. CBS News will be tracking the hurricane throughout the evening as the eye of the storm moves inland. A reminder now of where we are at the moment with this hurricane. It's about 180 miles south of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The eye or center expected to hit Myrtle Beach as early as midnight Eastern time this evening. The hurricane is officially a Category 4, packing very powerful and dangerous winds, estimated to be about 135 miles an hour, and this hurricane has a lot of water. It is the strongest storm to threaten the East Coast in 35 years. Once the hurricane hits land, the early projections are that it will head inland, probably losing a good deal of its strength, but still causing a lot of trouble, and then track up the east coast to New England and possibly into Canada before finally heading out to sea. Joining us now is CBS News consultant, uh, Dr. Neil Frank, who's at our affiliate KHOU in Houston. Dr. Frank, what's the most important thing we need to know right now? 
But Dan, there's a combination of a number of bad events with this storm today. You've already indicated that the winds increase today up to 135 miles an hour. That means it's a Category 4 hurricane on our Sapper Simpson hurricane scale. That also means that the water, the storm surge, is going to be several feet higher than we had originally indicated. So it might be 15, maybe even 17 feet above normal. And it looks like the center is going to cross the coastline pretty close to high tide. And if it does that, then that adds another three or four feet. So we got a very serious hurricane moving onto the coastline tonight. The most powerful hurricane to move on to the South Carolina coast this century. You know, Hurricane Hazel in 1954, the center of it actually moved over into the North Carolina area, even though Myrtle Beach got a very bad brush with that storm. So we got a bad storm moving onto the coast tonight, and I certainly trust that the people got off those islands this afternoon. Now, up above North Carolina, what can the country in the Northeast look for? Well, as the storm moves on inland, it'll lose its hurricane force winds very rapidly as the uh, center moves on up into the mid-Atlantic states, Virginia, and then on maybe off, it could even go out over the open water temporarily, then back into New England. The main concern is going to be the possibility of heavy rains. Now, the storm is... value. With the New Day 100, you can borrow 100%.